G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the east side of the map in the color yellow, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, it's Beastie Cutie. And on the west side of the map, playing in the color red as the Abbasid Dynasty as well, representing the Istanbul Wildcats, it's Casper. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number five in your grand finals of the caster mode clash. These two players have made it all the way through to the final stage, the final day, the final series of the day. It's going to be Casper, who's managed to pull back two games from a 2-0 opening from Beastie Cutie. And we somewhat reset now, because remember, this is a best of seven series. So if we cut two away from both of these players, essentially we're back at a best of three. And what does that leave us with? Well, that leaves us with an Abbasid mirror on Dry Arabia. How appropriate. A best of three with starting with an Abbasid mirror on Dry Arabia. Where have I heard that before? Well, I'm excited to see it nonetheless, because look, we're in the fifth game, and if this is our first mirror... I'll take it. Not too bad at all. We'll have a look at Casper's base and see how he begins to open. House of Wisdom coming down. Looks like it's not going to be a mill opening. Those have fallen out of favor. We're checking over on the side of Beasties. It's going to be the same thing. It looks like it's going to be a 7-3 opening from both of these guys with uh, with pretty much identical stuff happening. Maybe a little bit, a bit, a little bit of delay on the House of Wisdom. But uh, we've now got... Oh, that was a little, little bit of a mistake there, but don't worry. Casper's picked it up. Uh, so, I guess the question is, where do we go from here? How many town centers do we see? And how balanced are the maps? Apologies with, with that B. I think I hit you guys with a very loud B there. Uh, so, apologies. Uh, so, I'm already loving Casper's spawn. The fact that he's got two deer up here like this, and there's a perfect line where he can wall across like that. So, hopefully he spots that and, and goes for something along those lines. Uh, so, that's a really nice wall for him. He's also got back berries. Really nice. Gold also on the back as well. Berries on the back. Stone a little bit down towards the south side. So it is quite exposed. Uh, so overall, I'm, I'm, I'd be pretty happy if I was to spawn as an Abbasid player. Only got the berries in the front. And it's the sixth spawn. It's not the eighth spawn. So that's also a good thing. We'll check in with Beastie and see how he's doing. And he's also got double back deer. Uh, so I, I, I would I would kind of call this one double back deer. I mean, it's... it's Yeah, this is basically double back deer. Uh, so double back deer as well for Beastie. Also back eight vills or back eight berries. Uh, and then he's got his berries down towards the south rather than in the front. But they're still kind of exposed. And it's definitely a lot more open for Beastie. So it means that he's going to be uh, susceptible to a few more raids, a few more camel attacks, horseman attacks, all that kind of jazz. Whereas Casper's going to be able to wall off and kind of keep himself in the corner. So I'm curious what direction players look to go. Whether they're going to be thinking a bit more about an infantry uh, attack potentially. So maybe going for uh, archers as well as spearmen. Or whether they move into something like camels and horsemen uh but one of the one of the things that we're 100 percent sure that we're going to see and look, look at this this uh methodical scouting coming in from beastie right now he is scouting out every single direction and getting making sure he gets 100 percent of the information in so i do love that play there from him um but uh <laughs> I, 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 i'll just have you guys know i just got a dm from uh from fritz bro from fitz bro uh he's at twitchcon at the moment he, he just sent me a photo of himself with a very famous streamer. I'm not going to say who it was, but I can assure you, you probably know who she is. Um, and uh, he just said that he... Look, he, he's ticked something off his bucket list. Let's just put it that way. But uh, anyway, we, we digress. I hope you're doing well, Fitz, but I'm not sure if you're watching the stream. I'd be surprised if you are because you're at TwitchCon. But uh, look, if you end up watching this one up on YouTube... We love you. We all love you. Am <laughs> Amaranth? Oh, how did you guys know? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, the economic wings now coming through. Wheelbarrow also coming through for both players. So everyone mimicking each other on both sides of, uh, on both sides of the map here. The question is, how many town centers are we going to see? Now, my guess typically is three TCs for each player. I feel like the addition of any TCs after that, it, it's its not that it doesn't really matter. It definitely does matter, especially at this level, when you've got so many villagers that are being killed in these games, just simply because players have a very high APM. So they're able to control a lot of units, they're able to do a lot of things. And as a result, they're able to kill a lot of villagers. Uh, so I think that, you know, if, if you're on four or five town centers, you're able to replace those villagers faster. You're able to maintain that villager level that you want to be at, typically around that 130, 140 mark. Um, Whereas if you've got three TCs or even two TCs, it's going to it's gonna take you a bit longer to replace those villagers if the, in the event that your enemy does get through. But we now start to see the upgrades coming through. Fresh food stuffs through for both of these guys. Wheelbarrow through for them as well. Scout spotting out the villagers on the stone. We'll check in with Casper and see how he's doing as he's actually yet to take a stone mine instead opting for a barracks. Uh, so could be looking to potentially deny second town center. Good luck to him though. 
It's going to be tough. Let's see exactly where he's going with these. Uh, and it looks like he's heading to the stone. So maybe he's just looking to deny the third town center. And if that's what he's doing, that's actually very smart. Uh, so you can't deny, or at least in my opinion, I don't think you can deny the second town center uh, from with what he's doing, especially because it's going to be a back DC. I don't think that, that he can really deny that. But I do think that he could deny the third TC by just taking care of the stone. And the next stone outcropping is down here as well. Uh, so both players have gone up with economic wings. You'd be crazy not to go up with the economic wing. I, I think even it, it, probably in about 100% of games with the Abyssid Dynasty at the Conqueror level plus, it's with the economic wing. And look at what we've got here. Kasvar pulling out something a little bit special. Still no villagers on stone. Instead now, villagers moving out across the map. And now the military building is going to get put down by Beastie. Archers. He's also opened up with a camel uh, early on. So this should be able to nullify this position. We check in with Kasfar. I don't know whether he knows about the archery range, but he's about to find out. And with this, it's going to shut down everything completely. Now, why would this shut it down completely? Look how much damage that camel does. And now Kasfar's going to have to head back towards the base. So the opening of this fifth game is looking very strong for Beastie. You can see he's able to come back and, oh my God, he does so much damage to those camels. Villager number one goes down though in this game, the very first villager. We see Spearman getting picked off and the, the, this is the consequence of, of opening with an aggressive... Uh, build like this but hold on we've got a horseman that's come through now horseman looking to try and get in on the action villagers moving over towards the east side gonna be dropping down that town center at least i suspect they would no they're not that he doesn't have the wood for it he's only sitting on 60 wood at the moment instead gonna be going over to gold potentially thinking a bit more about upgrades but archer's gonna be looking to back this up and now things starting to get a little bit better for beastie moving out to stone you can see that he dropped down a whole bunch of food at the mining camp and finishes it off plenty of villagers out here seven now and so the question is, where does the second TC come in for Kasvar? And you'd be crazy not to chuck it here. It's such a great spot. Uh, and uh, and throw in that that wall. You could even throw in a wall if you want to go wall to here and then wall that in like that. But I mean, you're only really picking up the stone outcropping and you got plenty of stone. You're not, you're not too fussed about it. So second town centers. Going to be coming up shortly now for both of these players. Nice try. Nice to, nice attempt at aggression there from Kasvar. But definitely a little bit ballsy. He's going to be down a villager now for the rest of the game. And as long as that town center gets up before Casper's does, he's going to be down a considerable amount more. You see now, crossing the, about to cross that 300 threshold, but it might actually be very similar timing here from this. We see the first of the Golden Ages coming through. Beastie yet to actually hit his. Uh, we can see that he's sitting on a 9. Was that 9 out of 10? Yeah, 9 out of 10 buildings. So this will be the 10th building that's coming in, about 7 minutes. Not a bad little timing. Things definitely mirrored, though. Drop-off happening. And second town center getting thrown down around the stone. So that's Casper indicating he's going to go for a third TC. Let's have a look and see what Beastie does, though. There's the drop off on the stone. He's, oh, I, I should have been aware. He's actually definitely going for a third TC. So no real surprises there. Golden Age tier, tier one coming through. I was going to say tier three. Tier one coming through. Scout moving out. Uh, interesting position on the TC. I guess it makes more sense for him to throw it down here. He knows that enemy units are behind the base at the moment. Uh, and he doesn't have a real chance of, uh, of, of doing anything about those. So instead comes out towards this position. He's got the spearman that he can rally out here. I guess that's the way he's thinking about it. Probably also a more forward position here so he can defend this a little bit better. I guess that makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. All right. Well, for the moment now, Beastie going to be pushing out. Both players with Wheelbarrow. So the villager is going to be able to run a little bit faster away from any raiding forces. Beastie, let's see if he spots out anything. He sees the villagers on the wood line. What does Casper see? Casper all of a sudden sees it. Manages to escape. Villager's not taking any damage. Or rather, not, not dying. He does take plenty of damage. You can see he's heavily on the stone. To me, this might even indicate... The fact he's got 12 villagers on this might even be more than... Uh, he gets 316. The fact that he's force dropping it to me is, is like, oh, I'm, I'm actually just going to go three TCs. He could go more. The, 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 typically, you wouldn't have this many villagers on the stone. But now dropping it off, he's going to move out. Where does he go for here? He's just going to go to the to the food. So it is going to be three TCs for him. That's sure, That's got to be the third TC. Third TC now coming down for BC as well. So once again, as I mentioned before, I don't think there's any real incentive to go more than three TCs in this matchup. Definitely uh, three over two is, is far superior, uh, but anything more than that three number, really not going to be doing too much. But now we've got the uh, the Spearman doing a pretty decent job here of holding this position, but unfortunately getting outnumbered quite uh, quite heavily. Needs to focus the Spearman, does so successfully. Now the villagers turning their attention towards the Horseman as well. And Horseman just getting laughed at a little bit. Unfortunately, I'm, they're actually doing a pretty decent job here. He's taken out one villager. Now looking to take out the second villager as well. He's got a decent surrounding as another... A, a third Spearman begins to move in. And with that, I mean, he's taken out a number of villagers here. The Spearman is going to be able to back him up. Or back, back it up and uh, provide some assistance. And there we go. He's going to be able to get that third TC up. We'll take a look at and see how Casper's doing. He's got enough resources to drop that third TC. The question is, where does he go? 
Surely Casper goes up here. This is by far the best, best the best expansion. We'll have to wait and see, though. He's still yet to add the third TC. He knows the enemy's third TC is there. We actually see it on the minimap for once, and very rarely do we see things on the minimap in the observer mode. Something that they're still yet to perfect. Now that scout. Oh, oh you wouldn't want to be that scout. That We haven't scout for dinner, that's for sure. Horse for dinner. Village is now moving. Finally, we see that second town, that third town center coming in for Casper. A little bit late, and a curious decision to be calling it in so late. He could have had this one down a minute ago. It's three villages that he's missed out on. Village account for Casper is ahead, though. He's done a great job in just annoying Beastie and forcing that. Beastie going with a fourth town center. Okay, there you go. Uh, interesting positioning. Um, so why three TCs versus four TCs? Let's let's talk a little bit about about that and about why you would typically opt for three TCs over the four TCs and three TCs over, over the two TCs. So in the in the Abbasid meta, the way that it used to work was players would play two TC, and what would happen is you would go for men at arms and crossbows, and eventually people worked out. Well, hold on a minute. If I go for two TCs and they go for two TCs, by the time their attack gets to my base. I've got, like, more than enough units. So what if I make a third TC and I do the exact same thing? And that's what people started doing. They started making third town centers and they were able to defend the push. So you could defend a push, which was a two TC push, while you were going three TCs. And that's the reason why the, the meta started trending towards three TCs. Now, why would three TC versus four TC be better? Well, it would be better because there's a timing window. Now, you've got to take advantage of this timing window and it's definitely coming up on Casper. The thing is, he really needs to, to make sure that he's aware of this if you're aware of your enemy going for that tc uh then you can definitely look to capitalize on it uh but the re the reason why is because there's now 750 resources that have been spent by uh beastie that could be invested in either tagging or could be invested in to uh into military that he could then use to really look to leverage uh, that uh, that position um and uh and you would think that the same argument would apply from the 3TC uh, and the 2TC, but interestingly, it doesn't, because you can capitalize on that 3TCs much sooner. All right. Well, well let's see if Casper's able to pull it out. But uh, for the moment, it's definitely looking good for Beastie. Uh, the fact that Casper hasn't scouted that fourth town center could could definitely live to harm, hu live to hurt him. But he's managed to get walls up completely. So if you, if you haven't already... Go get yourself some popcorn, because we're in for a long game. This is an Abbasid Dynasty mirror. We're on Dry Arabia, which is an open map. And if there's one, one thing you should know about Dry Arabias, or rather open maps, it is that people love to just build walls on them. And so you can expect this game. Uh, do not be surprised if this game goes for an hour. I, I would not be surprised to see this game go for an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, we, this, could be the first, this could be the first competitive Age of Empires 4 game that goes for six hours. It is, it is really one of those potential games. Um, and obviously, Abbasid trade, another potent uh, uh, thing in the late game. The Abbasid civilization. You know, we talk about civilizations in the late game. I'd probably put the Abbasid dynasty as, as an S tier as well. The English and the Abbasid, in my opinion, probably both S tier civs. And when you see walls like this coming up in the base of Kasva, you can you can damn well bet that, uh, that he intends on playing this late. But Beastie realizing, well, hold on a minute. There's a potential window here for me. Up to 69 villages now. Very nice number of villages. Probably the third time we've witnessed somebody on that many villages before. Uh, but uh, yeah, th there's definitely a nice little uh, opening that Beastie's found for himself. I think Kasva, he's got 42 villages on wood. Significant military mass here. How many how many spearmen are we talking? We're talking eight spearmen at the moment. He's got 12 out. Now looking to try and find the, the, the potential angle for it. Going to get pushed away from this. Spearman numbers. Still what are going to be mattering here. Needs to be making sure it keeps those spearmen alive up towards the north. A counterattack going to be coming through from a single spearman. And now up towards the north, it looks like Beastie. He's going to be going for a counterattack and looking to try and pull the spearmen away. And this is what you've got to be so careful of. So the spearmen, if they end up chasing these uh, the enemy units like this through the base, which they're not doing at the moment, and Casper's doing the right thing, don't chase them. There's no point in chasing them. Uh, now, the, the, uh, a force this big could actually take down town centers. That, that's one of the issues that you're going to have. Villagers, villagers. Oh, super smart, but what happened here? I don't know what happened here. He's got to get the, the beautiful, beautiful play by Casper. Keeps those villagers alive. Keeps them safe in the back of the base. If you really wanted to maximize your efficiency, get him on a, get him on the tree in the meantime. You know, dro drop down. What's he going to do? Oh, he's, oh, he's going to burn through it. Okay. Can you imagine if 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 Casper big-brained it even further and then drew a wall around the edge here like that and like double-walled him in? Oh my god, I could actually see Casper doing it. Casper is the kind of guy to double wall an enemy in, lock him in, and keep him as a pet. That is Casper in a nutshell. But now he's going to be able to pick up a couple of horsemen here and doing the right thing. We see him resealing the front as well. So BC's locked in. 
It's not a case of of Casper being locked in with Beastie. It's a case of Beastie being locked in with Casper. Age up now coming through for Beastie. Village account 15 ahead, but really not 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 a relevant fact though. Even though you're 15 ahead, Casper's going to be right behind you. He's got three TC, so it's not a big deal as long as he maintains villager production. We can see he's doing that. Five villagers in the queue at the moment. Look at this, and now the quick war going to be coming in. Beastie going to be in a little bit of a difficult spot, losing a lot of units here. And now we can see Casper really taking advantage of this situation. Looking to chase down the units and... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Beautiful little opening right there. And now looking to body block. Manages to do it. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous play by Casper. Locks in all of the units. And it all goes back. Casper's walls. Casper's walls are absolutely amazing. What a glorious use of the walls right there by Casper. Oh my god. It is just A+, a plus, Casper. But now the next attack begins up towards the north of the map. And this is the reason why we see stone walls coming out so so often uh, against, against Beastie in particular. It's because of this. He loves to do this. Attacks with enough units that he can break through these walls. And now round six begins as up towards the north of the map. Casper says, you really want to try it? Didn't you see what happened the last time you did? Age up's now coming through for both of these guys. God, these, these guys are just on another level, aren't they? It's so impressive to watch them chase around and, and look at these silly walls that they've been placing down walls at the back here he's going to be able to use these as backup potentially throughout the game and manages to break through or almost break through this wall but the villagers all stay alive the villagers that were up here to the north and interestingly he leaves these villagers up here so that he can re-wall the gaps where's the counter attack on the south side we ride on board with beastie as the age up's about to come through and you can see the look at the force now from casper and there's a little bit of a there's a hole in your wall mate you're gonna have to fix that one but look at the force size from Casper. He's got double the population, double the military population, more than double the military population right now of Beastie. That is an impressive amount of units that he's got out here. Beastie fully walled in as well. You can see he's got the straight walls all the way down around the edge of his base. Four TCs encapsulated in, an, in a ring of onion. And we begin to see the onion strategy of Casper develop. We call this, this, this is known as the Turkish onion, originally implemented by Kasper, uh in a, in a game that he played up against, actually it was up against Beastie, uh, Abbasid versus the Malians. Uh, that was the Turkish onion. And we now see the Turkish onion coming out today as well. Expect to see more layers of stone walls or more layers of walls being provided here. We already have the second layer coming in and, uh, and, and expect to see more. There will be more. There will be plenty more. Beastie now up about 700 points. Village account also looking pretty decent. He's up about 20 villagers. But keep in mind, the village account, even though you, you've got 200 population, and, and at the moment Beastie sits at 150 population and he's got 114 vills, you cap yourself at about 130, 140 vills. There are games where you go up to 160, 170, um, and those are typically like really heavy booming games, maybe Chinese Song Dynasty 3TC kind of games. But for the most part, all you're going to be sitting on is 130 vills. And now, the main issue is that Casper's going to catch him. So, are you getting the value out of that fourth TC? Look, probably. Probably. Because it's, it's paid off until this point. So, I, I would... I would If I'm Beastie, I'd be happy with the, the way that I've done this. I think it's definitely the right decision, uh, considering the circumstances. But he does have to be careful. There is still that window of, of attack that Casper's got. And he's definitely looking at him the right way. Up towards the north, the infantry continues moving. I think we had Culture Wings coming through from both of these players. Yeah, it looks like Culture Wing coming through for Casper Cat. Culture Wing coming through for Beastie as well. Now Maganel out on the field. Expect both of these guys to be having a lot of siege out here. They are both playing the Abbasid. A lot of resources in the bag. We're actually going to split it over now. So you can see the income per minute on these guys. The Meta Arms makes his way out onto the field. Got to be careful. These are only hardened spearmen. We do see the upgrades coming through for the veteran. See? Veteran archers. Veteran spearmen. And it looks like a keep... He's going down for Casper. He's trying to throw down more walls. Look at this. He's really going for a quick wall here. He's, he's going for it. He actually makes it. He gets four walls down. He's going for a fifth one. Manages to, to do a pretty decent job. <laughs> Look at him go. He's walling like a madman here. Gets all of those walls down. Now Beastie coming back onto, onto the berries here. Forward keep going down for him as well. Looks like a bit of production on the front side. Gets cancelled by Casper. Was initially planning to do it. Realizing the keep is there and says, you know what? Ah... Uh, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother. So Beastie definitely setting himself up for the aggressive position in this game. Casper with the keep on the north side guarantees his position in the late game. And it means that any potential breaks through here are going to be met with a stiff defense. Now continuing to chase units around. Is this? This is still the third town center. I was going to say, is this the fourth town center that I'm seeing right now? Villagers evacuating, making sure that they're not killed. Beautiful stuff by Casper. The, the use of walls here is absolutely impeccable. 
Now he's got more units. Village is going to be going down. We see that Casper's actually losing out plenty of villagers here. Men at arms moving through. Beastie looking to try and take advantage of this positioning. We're going to enter into the cinematic mode as a keep looks to get dropped down in the base of Casper. The question is, whose keep is it? It looks like it's going to be Casper's as it's got that red health bar on it. The defense continues strong. The archers on the backside able to repel. There's plenty of them here. And he's able to just to slice through that armor that remains. Beastie up about. 600 700 score at the moment manganel on the backside to keep up safely expect to see a forward siege workshop here for some trebuchets shortly and now the manganel shot comes up he's looking to dive underneath the, the uh the the uh the, the oh gosh i've, I've had a, a brain fart apologies he's looking to dive underneath the keep but a big shot comes off that manganel no 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 not from the top rope don't do him like this beast he's trying to dodge it out he's trying to dodge it out but he's losing about five of them Manganel finally goes down. There's still a lot of damage that's been taken on these bad boys and you need some sort of healing out here. Stat, get those healing centers. If, you, if for anybody un unaware, there's actually a tech available where you can heal all of these units up as long as they're standing near a keep. A nice little dodge there from Casper, but got to be careful not to lose these. We see the spring in placement has come through and we bring the UI back on for you. Just to double check, medical centers is completed. There it is, just as we say it, but it's come through for Beastie. It hasn't come through for Casper. So medical centers underneath here, you can see it healing up and hopefully Casper that triggers something in his brain to go, oh, medical centers, I should get that as well. That's a cool tech. I should try medical centers. But still, we see a pretty decent military mass here for Beastie. The Abbasid Dynasty, infamous for their screams, their yells, their call out. For anybody who doesn't know, I'm actually an Abbasid uh, Dynasty voice actor. I do the voice acting uh, for the female villager for the Abbasid Dynasty. So if you do want to hear that, let me know. Uh, let me know down in the comments below and I will, uh, I will get back to you about that. But uh, I do a very... Uh, yes, it, it is. Uh, it, it's me. That I am the, I am the female... Oh, look at that. Casper now coming out with some villagers going ham. I think BC was having the same idea. Uh, but it, for anybody wondering the sound that gets made when a female villager completes a building. I'm going to head over here just so we can hear it. It's a little bit like this. It's getting early in the morning. I'm sorry. There was a little bit of a break in my voice. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's essentially it. Uh, that, that is the sound you make when you complete a house. <laughs> if you haven't heard it, Google Abbasid Dynasty female voice lines. It is beautiful. Uh, but anyway, trebuchet number one is out now for Casper. We see that the Imperial Age is coming through the military wing. Oh my lord, things starting to get a little bit seriously. And it's <laughs> starting to get a little bit crazy here in this game. Uh, but uh, look, I mean, can you really blame the female villagers for getting that excited about erecting a building? You can't really, can you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I stole that from Bidolin. I stole that from Bidolin. I'm sorry, Bidolin. Uh, I'll, I'll give you credit where credit's due. Keep coming up on the north side now. Uh, and uh, Beastie going to be in a really solid position as we enter into the late game. Up to 152 villagers for him. You know, I talked about that fourth TC and like, do you really need a fourth TC, Beastie? Come on, mate. And at 153 villagers, I think we can well and truly agree that yes, you needed the fourth TC. On the south side, though, we've got another keep attempting to come down and they're fighting over the gold vein. The best thing that you can do is look to try and match a keep versus keep. Look at all the villagers that are down here. Beastie just bringing every villager to the party. His, look at the resource income coming through for Beastie. He's going for a wonder. He's got to be going for a wonder. He's not really going for a wonder, but at the same time, he could be going for a wonder with the resources he's got. Casper, 154 population up against Beastie. He's on 184. And Casper definitely looking a little bit behind in this game. The farming economy going to be the main issue that we've got. Take a look at Beastie. Look at the farms for him beautiful stuff out here he's sitting on 2500 food a minute compared that to casper who's on 900 and you can start start to see the real difference between these two now that we're about to hit the imperial age it's all all, all going to be about that spam getting out those elite units and look at this the push coming out have we got we've got uh surely we've got no we don't there's no boiling oil through he's able to just sit underneath this and begins challenging this position imperial age coming through for beastie trebuchet still firing off towards keeps He's only got a handful of melee units. Needs to just pull villagers and just take this down. At the same time, Trebuchet going to get taken down for, for Casper. Casper going to be losing this, this position. This is terrible for him. He needs to keep this Trebuchet alive. It's the only real way out of, it, out of it. He manages to keep it alive. Keep is now slowly but steadily going down. Villagers need to get pulled to take these, these Trebuchets out. Is he just going to repair instead? What, what is he doing with the Vils? There we go. Villager number one on the way. Villager two, three. Oh, he shift clicked them. Oh, he, ra he rallied them to here and then moved them out. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. He's going to need some more reinforcements down towards the south side. We can see him still gathering up plenty of resources as well as the keeps fire down upon each other. It is just absolute mayhem in this game. 24 minutes in at the moment and we do start reaching the late game stage. Villagers have managed to take out the first of the trebuchets. The keep going to be starting, starting to get on fire. Need to pull some sort of villager... He's got plenty down here that he could look to repair it with, but now going to be moving out. 
Don't let that last trebuchet bullet get off. Whatever you do, don't let it go off. Don't let it get off. And now the... Oh my god, it's close. And he gets it off. And boom, down goes the keep. Six... No, 800 stone. Gone to waste. More keeps down on the south side. And you can see Casper sitting at minus two stone at the moment. If there's ever been a time to talk about insufficiencies, it is now. Insufficient stone coming through. And I tell you what, stone is a lot harder than wood. I'll, I'll just leave that with you for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's getting late. That's my excuse. Eight stables now coming down, and it's going to be that elite horseman play that definitely makes a lot of sense. We also see improved processing come through up in the top right-hand corner. 8% more resources, and looks like Casper's going to be coming through for a bit of a timing push. He's got crossbows and spearmen, the typical combo that we see out of the Abbasid Dynasty, but it looks like a veteran spearman yet to be upgraded to elite spearman. We can see it's in queue. Another 19 seconds to go, but Beastie's still looking pretty strong in this position. Plus twos on absolutely everything for him, except for the melees over on Casper. Still yet to pick up that uh, that Damascus, not Damascus steel. That's uh, that's uh, plus three, I think. But now able to push in behind enemy lines. A bit of an overchops come through. Knights now on the gold mine or on the stone mine. And we see the trebuchet looking to help out a little bit. I don't know where that boulder came from, but he definitely wasn't happy with the Abbasid player, whichever one it may be. Knights, nowhere to be seen. Spearman. Looking to try and clean up the villagers. They're looking to focus down the, the, the stable that was under construction. But now the crossbows on the back line. Elite upgrades finally coming through. We enter into the cinematic mode to see if Beast is able to hold on in this position. The archer's doing a decent job of dishing out the damage. But unfortunately, the, the elite spears are going to be really difficult to deal with. They've got so much range here. You can see them stacking up two by two. Look at this guy on the back side. With that phalanx upgrade, it just enables him to have that extra range. And he's able to go past the spearman on the front and able to hit those spears on the back. Beautiful job by him. And now we see more reinforcements come through. And that sound that you're hearing right there is Beastie reaching maximum population. So even with the defense like this, he is hitting at 200 of 200. Casper on the other side of the map, though, still sitting at 170 out of 200. Gets cleaned up completely. And now Casper might be in a bit of a difficult spot. 27 minutes into this game, and it's looking like it might be a little bit in favor of Beastie as he starts to climb ahead and score 3K. And you start to see that late game difference. Interesting trajectory there from the boulder of the trebuchet. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. Let's see. Was it the was it the trebuchet boulder or was it the boulder or was it the the cannon emplacement? Let's have a look. I think it was the cannon emplacement. It was like yeah, boom. South side completely mined out. Four four mining camps for Beastie. You love to see it. Uh, that that is when you really want efficiency and you can afford it. Uh, but uh, look, look at the walls now coming up. Beastie looking a stone wall up. He's going for a sacred side victory. Good game gets called. Casper tapping out in this game. Beastie going to be successful here. And move on to game number five. Beastie now sitting on match point. One win separates him from that total prize pool. It's a 27-minute game. The Abbasid Dynasty Mirror could have gone the distance. It could have gone all the way to 17 hours, but it didn't. Not today. We take a look at the village account, and you can start to see the difference there between the four town centers and the three town centers. It's actually a lot bigger than what, it, what I thought it would be. Definitely a, a nice... Like, by the time he gets here to 150 vils, Casper's only sitting on 113. Not a bad little effort. We take a look at the military tab. See how many units are killed. And Beastie's up by 11. Not a bad little game. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, I hope you guys have enjoyed this casted game. It's been an absolute blast watching these two guys punch it out nonstop all day. And we move into game number six. Make sure you check out that game. It's going to be coming up right after this one. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one.